are again tunable tunable q networks that is you can tune the quality of the match or the bandwidth of the match by simply uh, changing the free parameter that happens to be the center impedance so these are again tunable q okay so you can you can you can vary the frequency response as you desire um, so how you can derive them from the uh, basic two element L networks is that you use two front to front L networks and you get a T network as shown below. So you see these are two front L uh, networks, two element, two reactive element L networks. If you combine them, then you get uh, a T network. This is your T network. Okay, this is a T network. So uh, the advantage is again that the frequency response is tunable. Uh, and at the same time, you can tune the desired, you can tune it to the desired quality factor, okay? So the match, the match that it's going to produce is tunable, okay? I mean, you can you can improve the quality factor. So uh, you, by, by, by changing the center frequency, as we talked uh, about it in the, uh, in the pi networks, okay? So the, uh, the similarity is that, so each L network, the similarity with the pi network is that each L network transforms up to a center impedance that is higher than both the source and load impedances. Okay. Now uh, this is your center impedance. Okay. Because you see uh, this is this happens to be your source resistance, and then you have a unequal uh, you have uh, a load resistance that is not equal to RS in this case, and you're interested in transferring the maximum power to the load. Uh, you can either go for an L network, you can go for a pi network, you can have a T network as well. So uh, a series combination with the with the inductance over here, and then a parallel shunt capacitance will produce a certain impedance Z center over here. Uh, if you are looking towards left, similarly, if you're looking towards right, you have a you have the same uh, center impedance. Okay. That is the combination of uh, the reactive elements with the load resistance. Okay, here they combine. You have the same combination of reactive elements with the source resistance. So if you can tune your Z center, you can tune the quality factor of the match. Okay, so that that's the basic idea. Uh, what happened before? If you recall in uh, tunable binary matching networks, if you have not seen the video before, uh, you can watch this uh, in the given links in the description below. So uh, what happened was that we had this back-to-back uh, -back L networks. Okay, so this is the concentration of these two reactive elements, and uh, the center impedance was was to be chosen such that Z center is less than the minimum minimum of uh, either the load or the source. So it's less than the load and the source impedance. For example, if the load and the source impedance is if the load is uh, is 10 ohms it is to be matched to 1000 ohm like so you are going to select this to uh, to a value z centered like like 5 or 1 ohms okay so z because the idea is if you if remember in the l networks uh, if you if you if you simply employ a single l network to match a source impedance to a load impedance then the uh, the reactive element the shunt reactive element this is the shunt reactive element. This should come across uh, the impedance that is higher of the load or source. Okay, so this is only two element L matching network. So the shunt element is supposed to come uh, across the higher impedance. Okay, which in this case is thousand. And then you have this series uh, reactor to cancel the imaginary part because uh, if you are going to combine, if you are going to look at the Z left over here. Uh, the impedance that uh, is formed from this shunt reactor with 1000. It has both, uh, so this is the parallel combination of uh, 1000 and JXP, the parallel shunt reactants. It could be a capacitor inductive reactants, it does, it's not important, but uh, it turns out that it has both real and imaginary parts, okay? So the real part, you're going to set it to whatever the load is that we are going to, that is desired to be matched. And then uh, X left uh, that is coming into the picture going to the uh, the parallel combination of JXP and RS, you set X left to be equal to, or you set this to be equal to minus of XS, okay? 
just to cancel the imaginary part, you have the series director. Okay, so that, 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 that's what we talked about in the L matching network before. Uh, so the idea is uh, to have the impedance, uh, the, 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 the shunt reactance is going to come in parallel with the high impedance. Okay, what happened over here is that uh, the shunt is already in parallel with the uh, high uh, source impedance over here. And then a Z center is, of course, it has to be less than a thousand. Okay, over here it has to be less than thousand, uh, which in this case this 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 is thousand. Just show the thousand again. You, if you look at the other L network that is making the pi pi network uh, over here, if this if this is ten, so the load is ten. So it has to be minimum uh, or less than both of these values. Okay, so it has to be a minimum of uh, these two values because again you see the uh, shunt reactive element C two is in parallel or is in uh, shunt with the load resistance, okay. Therefore, uh, this series L2 should be in, uh, it should be in a series connection with the, with the Z center, which, which happens to be the, which happens to be, it should be lower than 10, okay, so that, that, that's the idea. So what happens in T is, in T network, we have this, uh, let's call this L1, let's call this C1, this is L2, and then this is C2, okay. So C1 and C2 are your shunt capacitive uh, reactances, okay, they are shunt elements. So over here, Z center, Z center should be chosen such that it is greater than the maximum because your uh, shunt reactive element is is coming across or it is connected in shunt with a high higher value of the impedance. So this is maximum of RS and RL. Okay, so it's the other way around in the T network because of the topology of the circuit is, is as such that you should have a have a higher uh, center impedance. Okay, and because your shunt reactive elements are coming across it, so Z center should be should be greater than uh, the two impedances RS and RL. Okay, greater than both of them. So note that both pi network and T network they have a free parameter, and that is again your Z center. Okay, that is the center impedance. It gives us some control over the uh, frequency response while providing a perfect match at the center frequency or the design frequency. So you can tune Q, but your maximum power transfer at the design frequency, whatever the design frequency is over at T. So maximum power, or let's call this P out, stays the same, but 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 you can vary the Q or you can vary the frequency response. Okay, by just varying the center. Okay. So the values that Z center in this T net frequency take is is of course greater than uh, RS and RL. So uh, let's have a look at how we can design. Uh, let's take an example uh, how we can design a T matching network. So over here we have uh, two front uh, two front L networks. Okay, so this is my first L network. This is my second uh, two element L network, and then a combination of this produces a three element. This is a three element uh, T network. Okay. Uh, so that the uh, that the shunt capacitance is, is the parallel combination of C1 and C2. So what is required is to design a T network to match a thousand ohm source. So we have this, uh, this we have a thousand ohm source, which is to be matched with a 50 ohm load over here. We have a 50 ohm load, and uh, you are very you have to vary the center impedance Z center to provide the uh, the highest Q that is possible at 1.5 megahertz design frequency. And find the corresponding reactive elements. So for each Z center, you are going to come up with L, C1, and C2. Okay. And let's see if we can fill up this table. Uh, so let's start this. We have uh, uh, we have four options over here. Okay. You see the first option, 2000, is greater than both 1050. Similarly, 3000 is again greater than both R and RS. So we have these four options, and let's see how we can control the Q quality factor uh, and the frequency response by varying Z center. So if you recall in the um, the Q method for designing of uh, two element L matching network, you have, uh, you determine the Q on both the source side and on the load side, purely based on the values of the, uh, the source impedance. Source impedance in this case is 1000, okay. And the load impedance, which is 50, okay. So on the source side, the uh, the impedance is thousand, and your Z center is set to be equal to two thousand. Okay, so two thousand is higher than 
1000. So R high over R low, so 2000 over 1000 minus one, this is your quality factor on the source side. And then uh, from these equations, you find the uh, reactances, series and parallel reactances from the quality of the circuit. So R high over X parallel, X parallel is this, uh, it's this XC1, uh, it's this. So you have R high is 2000 again, so because the center is said to be equal to 2000. All right. That, that, that's a variable, but in this case, but in the first case, we are looking at uh, whatever Q we are going to get, but what are the corresponding values of L1, C1, L2, and C2. So uh, your X parallel reactance is 2000, and then if you set it equal to 1 over 2 pi, uh, just like in the in the pi matching network, 2 pi F C1, where F is your design frequency set equal to 1.5 megahertz. What you get is, um, is C1 equal to 53.05 picofarads, okay? So that's your C1 over here. Similarly, you determine the series reactive element L1. Use this formulation, okay? So R low in this case is your 1000, okay? So X series over 1000 is one. Then your uh, inductance is 106.1 microhenry. And uh, this is for this first L network on the source side. For the second L network on the uh, load side, on the load side, you, you similarly, you, on, we follow the same same procedure. Uh, so your Q becomes, since the high uh, high uh, impedance is your 2000, that is the center, low is 50, okay, you find the Q, okay. Then for, uh, from these formulations, you find the parallel um, reactance, series reactance, and uh, from the series reactance, you set this equal to uh, 2 pi F L2. And what you get is at 1.5 megahertz is 33.1 C micro Henry's, okay? So adding C2 to C1 gives you your uh, shunt uh, capacitance. That is the only shunt capacitance over here. Um, so you're done. So once you have those values, uh, for the Z center, you have L1, you have L2, C, and you can see this values plugged on over, over here in an ADS schematic. Uh, 106.1 is here. This is your uh, series inductance for the first L network. For the second L network, this is your 33.13. If you run a linear circuit uh, analysis in ADS, uh, having a suitable step size uh, enough so that you have a smooth enough curve, uh, Use this. You're using this T network to match a thousand again, a thousand ohm source distance to 50 ohm source resistance, and you're measuring the power that is V out square over 50 ohms for a Z center equal to 2000. These are the results. Okay, it's the same circuit. So as you see, at uh, the match is perfect at 1.5 megahertz. It's the maximum power is being transferred at the design frequency. Your this is your design frequency FT. Um, you see uh, the response is that at high frequencies, at high frequencies which are uh, say uh, larger than the, the design frequency of uh, 1.5 megahertz, what happens is that this inductive reactance becomes large, this inductor opens up, capacitor shorts up, so there is basically there is no transfer, uh, there, there, there is no transfer of power at the high frequency. At low frequencies, well there is a mismatch because owing to the this 1050 ohms uh, mismatch, so the power transfer is small or owing to this mismatch. So at the design frequency, at the design frequency, the, the load, the so the load is looking at the uh, basically the load is matched to the source impedance of 1000 ohms, so there's a perfect match. So at the design frequency of 1.5 megahertz, the reactive elements are as such uh, that the maximum power is being transferred. Okay. Um, you see, at what, what what happens at near DC is that uh, the inductive reactance is zero over here, capacitor is open. So basically, what you have is similar is just a source at low frequency connected with a with an unequal load impedance. Okay. So at, at low frequency, basically, you don't have any matching. Okay. You don't have any matching. There is no T network at low frequencies. So at low frequency, the power delivered is small. But at the design, at the design, at the design frequency, uh, 
the the load and the source impedance they become they are they are equal so at ft the condition is as such that rs becomes equal to rl okay and that is the condition that we derived earlier for l networks for maximum power transfer okay since they are real otherwise you can say that if they are imaginary zs is the conjugate of zl okay again that's the uh, the condition for maximum power transfer if they are conjugate matched you have the maximum power transfer and that happens at on this the design frequency okay now uh, if you repeat this procedure you set as z center to 3000 and uh, you find the values of the inductances and the shunt capacitance uh, you see that increasing z center so the the solid thick blue curve is your uh, this blue is this blue okay the curve and this red is for uh, the z center equal to 2000 okay so uh, this z center sorry this is 2000 and uh, at the at the this blue curve it's 3000 so um, increasing the z center increasing z center reduces uh, or improves the q so if you if your z center is increased the quality is increased okay the quality of the matching the or the bandwidth uh, becomes small okay the, the the bandwidth of the match is small okay then uh, if you keep on increasing z center what happens is this this pink this pink is the thick uh, pink curve over here and so these pink values correspond to the inductance and capacitances of the circuit and uh, this z center this red is uh, over here the red curve then this blue values correspond to the blue curve over here uh, and this blue curve has a z center of 3000 in between and you have 2000 so as you're increasing the center impedance okay uh, this is the this is your center impedance so as you're increasing the center impedance okay and you're finding out those values of l1 and c1 and l2 uh, you're improving the q actually so you're varying the frequency response so that's how you tune the q okay so the q is increasing the q is q keeps on increasing and this is for uh, z equal to uh, finally uh, 10000 okay so you look at the uh, the cyan colored curve, uh, this is a thick solid line uh, curve, and the Q is maximum for uh, for 10 k center impedance. Okay, so this is greater than Z or uh, Z of 5 k. Okay, and this is greater than Q of 3 k because your bandwidth of match is becoming becoming narrower and narrower as you're increasing the center uh, impedance okay center impedance is the three parameter and from that you can vary your cues like this so this is a tunable d network okay? tunable d network for uh, tunable d matching network 